Hello and welcome to another comedian's interview for my blog A Rich Comic Life. My name is Richard Gill and my blog describes my experiences of watching over 800 comedians and counting of, over the last 46 years. My guest today is one of my favourite comedians. It's Mr. Lloyd Griffith. Yes! <laughs> Hello, mate! How are it's you? Like, it's like being at a gig in real life. <laughs> You're there on the front row in your special chair. <laughs> How's, um, how's things, mate? I'm all right. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. I've um, coping. Yeah. Well, yeah, coping. Yeah, getting there. I've not had a busy. Well, I've had, yeah. Do you know I've had a very busy day today. I've just various Zoom meetings, and um, I was going to Central London on my right. moped to pick something up. But um, yeah, coping, getting through it. There's yeah. light in the tunnel, and um, I can't complain. Can't complain, Rich. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview. Too, um, it's going to be about an hour, and it's going to be all about your comic career. Right, okay. So well, I mean, I'm, not, go... I'm, not, I'm not sure that will last an hour. <laughs> so, um, we're gonna, so, we're gonna, so we're going to go right back to the start. You're one of my very favourite current comedy acts. I like and, current as well. Yeah, yeah, any, yeah no, no, no. But you, you make me laugh so much, and you know it. Um, how did you become a comedian in the first place? Well, I've always known that I'm a bit of a div, like a, like a bit of a clown, <laughs> clown at school, always a bit of a, an idiot. But like at home, was always playing up. Got quite a funny family as well. Like my mum's really funny, my aunties are really funny, my uncle's really funny. So it was all, I was always surrounded by naturally funny people. And so I just, I don't know, I just remember be, being young, like when I was really young and watching TV and just thinking, Oh, I'd like to do what 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 they're doing, and obviously that didn't happen for you know twenty odd, thirty odd years until it kind of really came to fruition. But I kind of went off on my singing career first off, and then after the singing career, um, I kind of decided to do well to dip my toe into into comedy. And you go to open mic nights, and then I remember going to a comedy course actually in it was in Regents just around Regents Park. And I went on the same day as Rob Beckett. We don't remember each other being there, but we were. We looked at our emails and we realised we were on the same uh, course on the wow. same day. And um, there was a number of people um, on this on this board, and they were just saying, you know, it's a long old slog. You know, what I mean, you're going to be doing it for like three to five years before you, you know, leave and make any, any any money. And they were kind of putting a bit of a downer on it, really. And <laughs> Uh, it was, it was, you know, it was good advice, but it just made me go. Do you know what? I want to try and do it quicker than that. And you know, luckily, I just did a lot of MCing. I did yeah. a lot of MCing at the start, which just enabled me to, you know, to to, to kind of kickstart stage time. Really, do you know what I mean? Because right. a lot of people like to MC at the start. And then yeah, I, just, I, I went to a lot of comedy. I went to a lot of comedy when I moved to London in two thousand and eight. I went to a lot of comedy in London. I lived in Oldgate East at the time, and I went to. Um, uh, Backyard Comedy Club, which was then called Finfig Comedy Club, which then changed back to Backyard Comedy Club. Lee Hurst, yes, of course, uh, yeah. was, was hosting. And I remember the first show that I went to. Um, opening act was Milton Jones. The middle act was Stefano Paolini, and the closing act was Mickey Flanagan. Wow! And I just, I, but Milton and Mickey hadn't been on TV at the time, and I just remember thinking, like, how are they? Like, why aren't these on? on TV and like how are they making like this is incredible like 220 people in, in a small room I was like this is insane like the atmosphere was just out of this world and every week I used to go I used to like basically collar various different friends like do you want to go to this comedy club every week so every I think for, I think I went like three or four Fridays or three or four Saturdays in a row like Lee Hurst was a bit like oh mate it's getting a bit weird now I was like yeah isn't it but like I didn't really know of any other comedy clubs and then would read Time Out, would um, kind of like speak to various people, ask, you know, and then about, after about two months, I asked Lee Hurst, I was like, look, what, how, how do you get into comedy? Like, what, what, how do you get onto stage? He's like, well, you can't do it here, because at the time they didn't have any new act nights, it was just a pro act, like, right. you know, on the Friday and Saturday. He's like, go down to um, Comedy Calf, go down to Backyard, uh, downstairs at the King's Head Crouch, and yeah, speak yeah. to people, and that's what I did. And then about 
six months later got my first gig and it was absolutely fine like I, you know I wasn't great um, and it just kind of kicked off from there really you just keep going and keep going try and hone your act figure out what it is you want to say and stuff so but I, I had the experience of um, singing and performing so I kind of knew how to work a stage and work an audience to, a, to an extent but so yeah it all, all kicked off from there really from just so me. What, what sort of year was this uh, we were talking your first gig uh, 2000, 2009 Feb, February 2009 um, it was at the Goat Tavern in Green Park wow. so um, a room above a pub it was the Laughing Horse so my first ever gig was that it was a competition gig and it was like the Laughing Horse uh, new act of the year right eat. and I won that and I was like Oh, Bobby Big Balls being like, okay, fair enough. Do you know what I mean? I'm probably going to get a DVD deal, Wembley <laughs> Arena. Uh, and then did the next round, won that. And I was like, oh my God. Then did the quarter final, got to the quarter final. And then in the semi final, I was absolutely doggers. Like, I got, was, beat, I got right. beat by um, uh, Nick Helm and. Paul F. Taylor doing Helm and Taylor and another act whose name I can't remember. But I remember just thinking, oh, I'm out of depth here. Like, there's there's much better acts than, than me. I'm just really lucky with the, the other rounds that I had. So, but yeah, so that was 2009. So, like, um, uh, 12 years ago. So, when you first started, um, you say your first gig was a competition gig, but then after that, did you did you uh, get experience from playing like five minutes in yeah. free comedy nights and things yeah. like that, and you had to take friends along? Yeah, yeah that's exactly yeah. it. And I think you know a lot of people that you know a lot of people that you know that go to comedy like uh, James Gill's nights are obviously that. Yeah, it's a brilliant night. It's a little gem of a night. Yeah. If anyone ever says to me in London, like, oh, where's good to go in comedy? You know, when there's not a global pandemic on, you know, you do recommend, you know, either touring shows or various club gigs. But one of them is you go, oh, well, do you know what? On a, on a, on a is it, what, what day is it usually? Uh, is it Thursday? It's normally uh, a Thursday. He, yeah. he, he switched it to a Saturday. And, yeah. Uh, well, well, now he goes nearly every night. So, yeah, online well, it's yeah, every night, yeah. isn't it? But, um, you know, those those gigs, you know, always be comedy gigs are great. Little room of a pub, small, you know, seeing like amazing acts for not yeah. much money in the flesh, like they're having yeah. to grow. But starting out, you have to do some dismal gigs, like some really dingy gigs. So, and it's you know, and it's like just gigs where it's just you and maybe twenty other comedians all on the same bill at the same night. None of you care about the other person's act, like. <laughs> We just want to be big time. Um, and you kind of see the same faces. I remember seeing the same people at the, those same gigs. And you have like the bringer gigs where you have to like bring a fr like a friend, at least one friend yeah. along in order to get stage time. So therefore there's an audience. And like they're the most degraded things in the world where, you know, you're not very good. So you're asking some like a friend, you know, it's a real favour going, Anna mate, do you want to come see me who's not very good um, and will watch other people that are equally not as good? And then you like you end up doing so many favours for them in the city, <laughs> like, helping them move house, paint the garden, paint the garden, whatever. But, yeah. I have been that friend many, many a time to up and coming comedians. Yeah. Well, it, is, it is, you know, it's it's um do you know what, Rich? I, if someone said you've got to do you've got to do stand up from from scratch again, <laughs> again, and no, when there's no pandemic on and stuff, and when you've got to, you've got to start from scratch, it's that thing of going. I would, I know what the reward is, and the reward is doing a job that I absolutely love and yeah. you know trying to hone this craft, which is still honing over and over again. But what I want to go to a gig at like half seven to put my name down on a list to hopefully get some stage time <laughs> having brought a friend from work that I don't really know that well <laughs> me, and then buying them a drink and you know you're earning you know it's just I've been there you do anything for stage time you do absolutely anything for stage time and I remember I remember I had a job like a quite a serious job you know which was well paid and had security and I decided to give all that up to you know go to Swansea on a Tuesday night for 80 quid but um I remember doing finishing work on a on a, either a Monday or a Tuesday yeah and then getting 
getting like two or three hours off work and then basically cycling to King's Cross, getting a train from King's Cross to Edinburgh. Wow. Doing five minutes stage time at the Red Raw stand night. Wow. I had some sleeping pills and four cans of Stella. <laughs> had them on the sleeper train on wow. the way back because I, I also didn't realise there were beds. I thought I had a bed, but it turns out I just couldn't <laughs> sleep. So I was like, oh, that's not ideal, is it? <laughs> then I'm taking these, drinking this Stella, these sleeping pills. I've got a photo of it on my phone somewhere. I'm sure I can find <laughs> it. And it's just like me with like, they give you a little sleeping mask. You just sat on a seat and you have to try and sleep. And the sleeper train gets you into London, Euston at like 6.23. Yeah, yeah. You have to sleep into like 7. Wow. And I'm cycling then straight to work, having a shower at work. And then just being in the in the cafeteria, and then someone someone came in, knowing that I was doing comedy, like, "Oh, were you gigging last night, Lloyd?" I was like, "Yeah, I was actually." Like, oh, where were you? I was like, "I did the stand in Edinburgh." They're like, <laughs> yeah, mate. I was like, "I did the um, the stand in Edinburgh." They're like, "Last night." I was like, "Yeah." And wow. like, oh, I was like, "I just got the train, you know, at so, four o'clock." Did so the gig how how train. regular was that then? Were you were you fearless going to these places? You, you... oh yeah, I, I like. You know, I was I was going anywhere. I was yeah. genuinely going anywhere for stage time. And like, you know, at, at the start, you're doing five minute sets in yeah. these like really like long evenings, which yeah. just last an age. You know, and it would be like if there was someone good, you'd be like, oh my god, this is great. I fa you know, because all the, you know, there, there was a lot of dross there, and I I was a hundred percent some of the dross some of the nights. But then you see, I remember seeing Pat Cahill oh, and just being like. Wow, <laughs> Susie Ruffle, early doors. You know that Susie just definitely yeah. had something. Do you know what I mean? There was like going, wow, well, you know, like you know, and there was just you know, there was certain people where you just be like, oh, this is this is great. Like Joe Davis, I remember seeing like yeah, Joe yeah. Davis, and it's just batshit him bringing out like this little kind of like kids recorder, just doing stuff like that, and you're going. No, this is this is this is this is great. Um, but yeah, so I was honestly doing anything for stage time, and then. You would get 10 minute gigs outside of town. So you drive to those gigs. Um, you drive other people to gigs outside of time, uh, town just to, just to get stage time. And, you know, I, I kind of loved it. Um, it's brilliant. That, that's yeah. that's a reason why I write the blog, because um, for me, it's magical to watch these great acts start and develop. Yeah. And 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 w w watching them time and time and time again, to yeah. me, is just brilliant mm. because the blog is such an enthuse because yeah. it's the hardest thing to do in the world to walk out onto a stage and within a minute make an audience try and make yeah. an audience laugh. I, I I I honestly don't believe that is the hardest thing in the world. I right. think it, just just um, there's just a certain, there's certain things if you can get right. You know, I think there are much harder things in the world, and I think yeah. there are much more, you know, jobs that are, you know, like being a paramedic or a, yeah. you know, a teacher or single parent mum. And that's, you know, I just, I just think with, with with comedy, once you've got it, doing that at the, at the start is the hardest job because it's like if you if you really want to do it, if you really want to be a, a comedian and it doesn't work, if you go out every night, it is the hardest job because that's not going to be your job. And the hardest thing is to accept that, oh, I probably, I'm not cut out for this. But if it does work, then you kind of figure out how to do it pretty early on. And, you know, some people obviously fly really quickly. Some people it takes a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, um, you you do anything for stage time at the start. You know I mean, I, I was chatting I, to Rob uh, about it. And, I, I had a go. I've told this story to many a comedian, but I, I, I actually had a go. I got it out of my system very early on. And uh, yeah. I, I went to the promoter and I said, look, I said, uh, uh, I think I can be a stand up comedian. And, and he goes, oh, he said, there's a there's a, a, a gong show for old folk. It was at the Edinburgh Fringe. <laughs> it was on a Monday <clears throat> afternoon. And uh, I said, I said, right. And I went away and I wrote a script and I, I read it out to him. And he said, this is brilliant. Go and knock him dead. Now I, I ran on and there was three people in the crowd. There was an old, the three old fellas. 
and I, and the first thing I said was hello everybody uh, uh, I think I look like Eddie the Eagle Edwards but I can't see the resemblance myself thinking that would get a killer laugh because obviously I'm his double and one old bloke at the back just went fuck off and gummed me off <laughs> <laughs> So I, I walked off to my own foot, footsteps and the promoter went, go on, have another go, have another go. So I did the same thing, roughly happened again. And I looked at him and I said, well, I think my place is in the audience. Never say never again, but, you know, I yeah. will support them uh, forevermore. But, I, I've had people, I've had friends that have, have basically gone, oh, I'd love to have a go of it. I go, well, yeah. you know, do. Yeah. You, you, there's, you know, uh, there's, there's only one way of finding out if it is for you or yeah. not. Um, yeah. And it's interesting. Some of the people that have said to me, oh, "I really want to do it," you go, "Okay, cool." And then some of them that actually do it, you go, "Oh, well, fair play to you." Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and then that have gone on to do it or haven't gone on to do it any further. Yeah. And I think it's really weird as well because, like, I think certain people are born naturally funny. Certain people are born naturally funny. I think certain people are born with the ability to write really funny stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then learn how to deliver it. And I think. I, I personally think I come under the naturally funny and because I maybe may, 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 I struggle to I struggle to write but I find that harder than you know I'd rather MC, if someone's yeah I'd not rather MC but I just would be able to just riff and just have a little bit of yeah. fun rather than come up with uh, you know an idea off the spot and just go, go with it but um, I think yeah it, there's there's, there's Certain people that come to you and go, oh, I think I could be a comedian. And automatically you go, I don't find you naturally funny. So unless <laughs> you've got the ability to write something killer, then fair enough. But there are people that, you know, in, in dressing rooms, you know, up and down the country, you're going, God, oh, you're not naturally funny. Like, I, I don't enjoy, I don't enjoy hanging out with you, but there are certain people that are going, you know, and obviously you don't have to be on the whole time. You don't have to be like yeah. funny, funny, funny the whole time. But there are certain people you just enjoy being backstage with because they're just naturally funny the whole time. Um, so, certainly, um, certainly. Well, watching, sometimes they're not that funny on certainly, having watched so many over the years, I totally agree with you because there is that other level where yeah. They don't do anything and they're funny. Eric Morecambe comes to mind, Tommy Cooper, mm -hmm. Les Dawson, yeah. Peter Kay. You know, there are these people that just, you just want to spend time with them yeah. because they're very, they, they, they just let off funny vibes. It's, it's, it's extraordinary. Having, yeah. having said all this, what do you think makes a great comedian? Personally, I think making a great comedian is someone that is just naturally funny yeah. anyway in real life. Yeah. And they're the people that I um, admire and love and have been lucky to work with in, you know, in, in, in real life are just naturally funny the whole time. Like, I, I like growing up, like, I loved Lee Evans. Yeah, yeah. I, I loved Lee Evans. We used to watch Lee Evans, Eddie Izzard. Yeah. And, you know, have it, I, remember, I remember doing... Um, like a five minute or 10 minute spot at the comedy store. And I'd just done it. And I'd had a good one. I didn't, I, you know, no standard ovation, but I'd had a good one. And I just stood at the side. And then someone just came and stood next to me and was like, um, was that your first time? And I'm like, oh God. Like, and that was like, oh, no. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was, they were just, just came, came, not not a crowd, like, it was literally I was stood at the back in the dark and then someone came and went, was that your first time? Oh. And I just, I, um, and I just turned around and went, I, I, I didn't turn around, I was like, oh, did it look like it? And I turned around, it was Eddie Izzard. And I was like, wow. oh, is it like, did it look? He goes, no, 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 I'm just saying, like, I, I haven't seen you here before. Like, I just wondered, is it your first time at the store? Wow. I was like, oh, no, it's my second time at the store. But he was like, I really enjoyed it. I was like, oh, thanks very much. And then we, we started chatting and we went backstage and he was very funny, like just naturally yeah, yeah. very, very funny. And then there was a bit where Ben Norris was running late. And Eddie was just dropping in to see Don and, and, and the rest of the um, Comedy Store crew. And um, I remember Graham came through and Graham was like, Eddie, we might have to ask you to go and do like five, seven minutes just to fill. <laughs> and it was so funny seeing Eddie Izzard just shit himself going, what? No, no, no. Oh, I don't know. Like, who, who are we waiting for? It's like Ben Norris, like, I just, you know, fight. Uh, I'm an albums guy. I'm not a singles guy. I couldn't go on and do 
Um, and you just saw him pacing up and down. Yeah, and just, yeah, yeah. He was being funny about it, but you could see he was genuine. There was not fear, but like it had gone on and done something amazing. But it was so funny. And then Ben Norris came through like with minutes to spare. <laughs> And like motorcycle boots on, he he'd come from South End, <laughs> yeah, yeah. motorcycle helmet in his hand. And he went, Eddie, and uh, he was like, Ben, oh my god, I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> I, went, I wanted me to go on, but uh, you, you've got to go on. And Ben was like, No, 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 you go on. Like that's what I'd rather watch you than watch me. He was like, No, 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 please, please. And it was just really funny. But like, so, sorry, just to put that point where you know, I remember watching Eddie's. Uh, growing up and thinking he was so funny and then to meet him in real life and him be as funny and yeah. you know Lee Mack I absolutely like, like Lee Mack Sean Locke are like two of my idols again like growing up watching them um, and I've been lucky enough to obviously to, to work with them and they're really funny like they're yeah. really really funny comedians football you go to comedians football and there are certain people that are just hilarious at comedians football you know what I mean that you just think oh it's great you know it's that's really, fascinating it's really good so I, I personally I know that there are people that aren't naturally funny off stage but I just got the gift of the gab can go on stage and then are just really extreme like extreme yeah, yeah, funny, yeah. You know I mean always have an act that they just they, you know they are a character on stage and that's them on stage whereas personally I just I love naturally funny comedians um, that's brilliant that's so good yeah. um you perform with choirs at Westminster Abbey and other major London venues and brilliantly incorporate the singing into your comedy act. How did the singing come about? Well, it was it was mainly due to like, how did the comedy come about? I was already, I, I sang as a, are you, are you on about how did I start singing? Yeah. Like, or, so um, I was just like a, in a normal school in Grimsby and then uh, I had a godfather who basically had a bit of mo retirement money left over. And he was like, look, do you want to go to this school for a few years? Um, and yeah. I was just like, yeah, fair enough. So it was, a, it was a posh school, but I mean, not that, you know, it was in Grimsby. So I mean, yeah. it's all relative, isn't it, really? It wasn't like Eton or Harrow. It was just like a, a private school in Grimsby. So um, I was like, yeah. And then I got there. I was there about a week or so. Then there was a choir. I was like, oh, who's this choir that's singing this church? And the, the headmistress was like, oh, it's the... It's the choir where it's a choir school. I was like, oh, how can you be in the choir? I really want to be in that choir. And so oh, you auditioned. So I spoke to my mum and went on auditions. And then the choir master came down after I'd auditioned, a bloke called Mr. Shaw, lovely bloke, camp as anything, absolutely like incredible, incredible teacher. And, uh, you know, that might have been where I got like the initial kind of like performance in my room because he'd always perform, like even in like choir practice in the morning. He came down, he was like, um, so um, we'd really like Lloyd to join the choir. Mum was like, okay, that's great. He was like, so it's rehearsal Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, eight o'clock before school. And then there's even song Tuesday, Thursday, Friday after school, and then two services on Sunday. And mum was like, yeah, no, actually, to be fair, Lloyd is quite busy at the moment, so I'm not entirely sure that works. And he was like, and then you do get 50% off the school fee. She went, actually, double, double check. He's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. He can, yeah, he can start Monday. So then I just started as a choir boy at the age of seven. Um, and then two weeks after I've been in the choir, we went on a choir tour to Belgium. I mean, I'd never really stayed at other people's houses before. That's amazing. And then I was going to Belgium, I cried every single night. Like oh, a little right. So, um, but yeah, and then, then the singing just took off from there. Like, it was just what's, one thing that I was quite good at. What's, what's brilliant watching your act is that uh, you introduce it either midway through or near towards the end. So you've always, you've always got that brilliant... Um, it's, ammunition's the wrong word but but you're so good at doing it that yeah. it's 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 a guaranteed crowd pleaser and it's wonderful yeah. to watch it but it's, really it's, is. no i get a lot of stick from a lot of other people just being like it's cheating you sing you get a round of applause i'm like yeah a hundred percent i mean like <laughs> i've spent 20 years training yeah, too, as a right, singer. Right. I was like, i'm not gonna just waste that i was like if that gets an applause i was like me jokes are so that may as well do exactly so, um, exactly but your jokes do um <laughs> You've supported Rob Beckett in 2013 and Jack Whitehall in 2017 on separate tours. What was that like supporting him? Yeah, it was great. Like with, with Rob, so like Rob's one of my best mates and we started roughly at the same time and, um, you know, we just became really, really chummy. And then obviously he had a kind of cataclysmic um, ascent of fame and, yeah. well, it's a success more than fame. and. 
he won all these competitions and then got some TV stuff early doors and it was it was becoming apparent that he was going to tour and so he he just said look I'd, ra- I'd just rather go on tour with me mate um, so that's, that's, brilliant. that's kind of how it came about and um, we used to drive around with his little Nissan Micra his little automatic Nissan Micra uh, which was great um, sh- we used to share rooms you know for the third I actually went on tour with Rob for three tours I did three tours so it was like wow. four or five years of touring but that was great I mean going on going on tour with Rob and it was just like two friends and it would you know we'd help each other we'd help each other yeah, with yeah, material yeah. and you know support because obviously away from home and, and what have you we're both quite like home home kids really um, so that was fun and again you know it was, was, was amazing and then yeah next level I've done two tours with Jack now first wow. one in 2017 and then the second one in 2019 right and um, yeah re- really great but just like a different level of touring you know I mean? so were these it, it, like it, more like arena tours then or yeah so yeah. Rob's Rob's one Rob's first ones were like anything from 50 seater to 300 seater right um, and then they got bigger and bigger as, as you know as, as his kind of success grew and uh, you know was going to like theatres you know big big old theatres um, and now he's doing like huge rooms I mean Rob's doing really big rooms but then Jack you know he's one of the few people that does arenas you know there's only a handful of people that do do arenas and yeah so like I went on, went on tour with him and it started off in 2017 just doing the theatres as warm up and I was genuinely dreading doing the first arena um, just thinking if I if I'm crap, I don't think I can face it. Do you know what I mean? Being like knowing that I can't do arenas, knowing that you know the you know if he goes, do you know what? We'll, we'll get someone else in. So I'll be like, oh god. And then luckily the first night in Liverpool went really well. And then yeah. I just came off, rang my agent, I was like, I'm an arena comic. I want to do arenas. <laughs> Deservedly and, uh, so. <laughs> you know I mean, it keeps me very grounded. It's like, well, I mean, let's let's um let, let, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. So. But yeah, it was an amazing experience because you know not, not that many people um, are able to no. do those arenas. So and, it would be great. And and again, like you say, it is all experience. Everything you do, yeah. you keep doing it. You, you just get better at doing it. Yeah, and it kind of you know the the, the stuff that you know like you can't really MC an arena because yeah. there's two thousand people. Yeah. Um, but certain certain skills that you learn from over the years all help when when doing doing arenas and again the scene thing massively helps if you can sure. go on stage and properly fill that arena with 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 sound and i did it early door in in the, in the arena sets i'd always sing early doors just to kind of get that applause so people were going oh we've clapped already you must be good and it's a bit of a cheap <laughs> thing going, no, it works, like you thing, but again i'm still going to take it and then hopefully you'll have the jokes and you know luckily yeah. they do so um yeah it was, it was an amazing experience and one that you know i still think about a lot is obviously very honored that jack asked me on those on that tour and that rob asked me on his tour so Brilliant. and it's now great that i'm doing my tours and yeah. you know climbing to climbing up the uh the, the capacities not at arena scale yet rich but uh you will be there my it, friend it, it, i'll be there <laughs> I'll have no hair, um, <laughs> but I'll be there. <laughs> yes, definitely, I'll be there. Um, let's move on to Edinburgh. Um, yeah. I go to the Edinburgh Fringe every year, and I've been going the last 15 years, and I see about 50 shows in the week that I go there. I absolutely love it. Um, what was your first Edinburgh Fringe like? What was interesting, I didn't really know about the fringe. I wasn't, you know, I'd heard of it, yeah. but when I started doing comedy, I wasn't aware that it was the thing to do. And then everyone talks about the fringe, you're going to the fringe, and I was like, oh, I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> and uh, honestly, I had no idea. I was like, uh, I don't, you know, and then I kind of, the, the I made the decision to go up for like a week um, and just, just experience it. So me, Rob Beckett, our mate Kishore, we just went up for like a few weeks and um, I managed to make it work with work and was just doing gigs. I was just, you know, just trying to just get any any gigs I yeah. can and just experience it. Just, you know, saved up money to go and watch shows and see how it worked. I was like, oh, right, you can do an hour show, right. So it was just all oh, research really because I just didn't know that people, you know, I'd heard of like touring shows, you know yeah. what I mean? You'd see, you know, I'd seen like Lee Mack on tour and Mickey Flanagan, but I wasn't aware that, 
you know, or Edinburgh Fringe was the acorn that created these kind of like touring shows. So it was a real eye opener. Um, and it was just for the first two or three years after that, you know, I was doing compilation shows, few couple like first, what was it? Uh, I think it was me, Romesh, and Robin Buckland. We did Three Blokes Tell Jokes. So that was me and Matt Reese. Yeah, yeah. One, one year, Griff Reese Jokes. Um, and then I'd done like the AAA package show. I'd done Just a Tonic a couple of years. Like, in fact, well, I've got, a, I found this the other day actually. It was the um, big value. It was this, it was the second year that I'd done it. Wow. Um, so I'd done it one year before. Um, and actually, do you know what? That's not as good a lineup, to be fair. <laughs> Yeah, let's leave that out. But I remember like, the first time that I'd done it, it was me, John Robbins, Mike Newell, yeah. Beckett, Ramesh Ranganathan, Sean McLaughlin, wow. Caroline Maybe. Yeah. Um, so there was like a real kind of like... What a bill. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, on three different bills, but yeah. it, was, um, it, was re it was really fun. Flange yeah. Crammer. Flange yeah, Crammer. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, so it was yeah. You just did that, and then then you go up and I did my first hour in 2013, maybe. Um, but yeah, it was a real it was a real eye opener. And for anyone that hasn't been, like when it comes back, then you know, wholeheartedly recommend you go there oh, if you like the theatre. It's just, just you just step off that train, and the atmosphere hits you. At, yeah, at Waverley. It's just extraordinary. Um, I've seen and loved your solo shows. Uh, I've seen Inundated in 2017, an all rounder yeah. in 2019 at the yeah. Soho Theatre, together with your many performances at Always Be Comedy. Describe how you get your ideas for a show and if there is any sort of writing process involved. How do you go about constructing a show? <laughs> It's weird, really, because every year is a bit different. Every yeah. year, you know, it, it just depends what I've done in that year uh, right. uh, and uh, whether it kind of has the premise of a show in that year. So Inundated was about how I'd been dating a dating columnist and then we broke up and then uh, All Rounder was a little bit... I didn't really have much of a theme as a... You know, it was just an hour and a bit of jokes really it was brilliant. the show that I've got yeah the, I, I really enjoyed that and that, that Soho Theatre run was was you know was absolutely lovely because sometimes London gigs touring especially can be quite difficult but Soho Theatre that those three or four nights were just absolutely electric each, each night and I got really drunk every night um, I've got I, a great yeah, photograph of us it's really oh yeah I remember there, that yeah, yeah. in the, the yeah. booth yeah. I, th I don't think my eyes are I mean I, there's a very much a, a bit of a rummish about me in that in that photo <laughs> where I'm kind of like my eyes I've got a, a kind of I can't I think it's this one is when I get drunk this eye just absolutely does its own thing oh right I mean, yeah. that's, that's um, probably why but um, yeah and then the show that I'm doing that I, I've done in 2020 and is I'm redoing at the end of this year is um, that's got um, a story about it very much a story about me wanting to sing the national anthem at, at the Euros so some, sometimes I just start with a there's a story and I build it from there and in some years it's just an hour and a bit of jokes with a, a little bit of a theme but ultimately it's just me having come up with material and funny things that have happened in, in that year so it just depends what, what what year it is and what's happened really the, the new one is um, not just a pretty face that's right isn't it yeah, yeah. and and uh, we had tickets for that last year of course yeah. which was had to be rescheduled yeah. so now we're hoping to see you it's something like october this year october the, october the 10th i think it is yeah. it's leicester square theater yeah, yeah 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 we will be there you'll be able to hear the laugh i got a nice little cheap <laughs> Oh, yeah. By the way, I've got a little plug in there as well. And then knowing that that one, I'll have the biggest left there in London because uh, uh, Rich Kidd will be there. <laughs> Hopefully not front row. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to it, really are. Um, uh, we're all living in strange times. It's been a horrible, horrible year. Um, uh, um, do you, how have you found online gigs as opposed to um, live gigs? 
do you like them do you do a lot of them yeah yeah, yeah. I, 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 at, the, at the start because we didn't really know how long this was going to go on for I was a little bit sceptical about doing online gigs yeah um, just because I you know because I'm quite a uh, not a physical comedian but I just like to be in the room yeah. I always think you know I'm not like a one liner I like to be in the room type, kind of like speak to people and stuff so I was just a bit apprehensive as to whether I'd actually be any good and then I tried a few and really liked them and what you just got to realise it's a completely different skill set it's a different well for certain people it's you know it's not like you're doing stand up live on stage it's like you're doing a an evening with it's a little bit like you're doing you know a chat show where it's you know you're just kind of like telling it a little bit of a, a different tempo so I've really enjoyed doing them and over Christmas did an absolute shed load of them and still doing yeah. them now I mean I've got three this weekend two on Friday one on Saturday and I do it mainly for, for, for mental reasons really just to keep my brain ticking over knowing that I am still funny because that's the biggest fear just doing a gig and realising oh god it's gone I'm not funny so I've, just, I've, I've enjoyed doing them just for my mental well-being more than anything and just realising after a little while, oh, actually, it's a bit of a different skill set. You've got to do this, you've got to do that. But they've been fun. And it's been it's been great to be able to do them knowing that crowds have wanted them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially, again, not to keep mentioning Always Be Comedy, but that's probably where, you know, you and I met and um, where you really probably first fell in love with the, the, the comedy scene that you, you know and love now. But, you know, what James has done there is absolutely exceptional to, to, to garner an amazing community of people that love yeah. stand-up. And then he's garnered a community of comedians that love the audience, you know what I mean? So doing Always Be Comedy Online is always an absolute treat. Um, and it just brings so much joy to, to a lot of people's lives. You can I just think, dip it in the out whenever you want. I think from my uh, point of view, uh, this is a very good substitute to live yeah. comedy. Um, yeah. uh, uh, online comedy. If 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 it wasn't there, I don't know. I don't know. I would have got through lockdown. But oh yeah, I th you know, it's yeah. it's definitely been a it's been a lifeline for a lot yeah. of people, both you know performers and us yeah. and also, and or, or punters as well. Yeah. Um, and it has been great. But I mean, crikey Moses, I cannot wait. Even oh, just the, the outdoor you can't gig. miss life. I, yeah. I I love going out, having a few beers, and then because live you do, you just do no, not know what's going to happen that's yeah. the magic of it and when it goes well yeah. you're in a you're, you're in a room uh, and 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 you're only in that atmosphere at that moment it's yeah. just the best it and really even, even, even so like i've had a lot of bookings coming through for um for outdoor gigs yeah yeah a lot of outdoor gigs happening in the next kind of like few months once yeah. you know, the, the curfews the roadmap allows and even they're great, do you know what I mean? Because last year we did a lot of outdoor gigs and people were just so happy to be out of the house. Yeah. That was the thing. They yeah. were just like, ah. And some of these outdoor gigs were as loose, or not as loose, but as, as, as energetic as kind of like Christmas gigs or, yeah. you know, like just it have this like, really, like, lovely, like, like a Glee weekend. Like if you do... The Glee Club in say Cardiff or Birmingham on yeah. a Friday and Saturday night, yeah, and, it, and it's full. There's 400 in there. They're packed in. It just has such an electric feel to it, and that's what a lot of these outdoor ones felt like. It was just people like, "We're out, we're having fun. <laughs> we're not dead." We, yeah, we went to the uh, Greenwich uh, Festival last year, yeah. and top of the bill was Dara O'Brien. Jen Brister was on and uh, it was really good but we were like miles we were just oh, really? sitting there and it was like freezing but yeah. i was right at the back trying to laugh away but it it, it worked brilliantly Dara yeah. brain set was superb um, you have like me you have a love of football with you it's yeah. grimsby town with me it's carl, carl united yeah. yes get in and uh <laughs> You have appeared on many TV comedy shows and most notably as a host for Soccer AM, which you were brilliant at doing, and on radio for Talk Sport and Five Live. What are the differences appearing on TV and radio as opposed to live stand-up? Um, again, just different skill sets, really. Like, you know, you, I think you, with, 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 with Soccer AM, 
you know, you're a presenter, you know, yeah. you're a presenter and, you know, you've got to present first and foremost and you're a comedian second, which, um, you know, some people fail to remember. But, uh, you know, it's, it's very, it's like just, I remember going on Soccer M for the first time and like, you go on, st you stand up, you go out there, it's you in front of like however many hundred people, however many thousand people and you just go and do your thing that you want to do, that's it. On Soccer M, there's a script and then there's an auto cue and there's guests and there's like a, a an earpiece in your ear and in that earpiece you've got the director and the producer and the PA doing the countdown all in your ear so you've got three voices in your ear never at the same time but still you've got to go all right that's Tim the director oh that's Darius the producer and then it's like oh that's the PA counting me down to and three two <laughs> there's all that and then you've got the guests, and then you've got the crowd, and then you've got all the, like, the, oh, hey, hey, and it's like, ah, ah. So for the first <laughs> month, we were, you know, me and Jimmy especially, we were like, oh, God. But once you've got that, it makes other things that you do in the future a lot easier to do because you're yeah. going, crikey, if I could do live TV on a Saturday morning after a while, you know, you, you, you realise that you can do other things. But I think stand-up and especially emceeing helps, helps for those things, whatever you do, you know, just to be able to step in and just you know, do, do, do whatever you need to do. So all these things, you know, you you you, you do them and they kind of, not the old analogy, you know, strings to your bow, but it is literally just adding strings to your bow that you can use later on down the line. Yeah, yeah. Do you prefer comparing to actually delivering a solo routine? I prefer, <sighs> I prefer delivering a solo routine. Yeah. yeah. There are some nights where I'll, I'd like to compare. It's easier. It's just it's, some nights it's just easier. I'm like, yeah. look, I'd rather just compare tonight. I'd rather just go and chat to people, not have to worry about the jokes or what have you. But I'd say 90 percent of the time, I just like going out and just being being a little fat idiot and doing jokes about <laughs> being a little fat idiot from Grimsby with a weird voice. So it's um, yeah, I'd say definitely like yeah, just. And also, but to be fair, like when I do my, you know, you just, you know, you see my stuff, like I like to chat to the crowd as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, is, you're very good at doing that. Is, you're you're not afraid to do that, which is great. And it's, you know, some people do see it as a bit of a cop out. Like there are certain people that would never do that. And that's absolutely fine. But, you know, there are certain people that only speak to the crowd, you know. So it's just trying to find what you, what, trying to find find what you're happiest doing and then as long as you're happy hopefully the crowd are then happy as long as you're funny what i what i love as well about your act is that is that whenever you're telling a story the way that you deliver it um the audience are, are always trying are always rooting for you and it's the way it's told it's 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 the way it's told. um do you get any nerves before you go on and if so how do you cope with them i don't oh you don't maybe, maybe i should uh, maybe maybe that'll make me better but is yeah, that, no, is that no, right no, the way through no. since the start were you nervous at the start so, some gigs nervous at the start yeah. yeah some gigs nervous at the start you know and I guess it's that unpredictability if I was going into stuff that I wasn't really you know that things were out of my control I'd be really like oh now and then if I'm doing, doing stand up on TV I get a little bit nervous because I'm like there's it's kind of different to what you're used to yeah and you know some nights when I'm doing stand-up on TV, I don't, I'm like, oh, she's great. But if there's, if there's certain things that are like not as they usually are, I'm a bit like, Ooh. you know, I do, I do get a little bit nervous. But um, ordinarily, yeah, stand-up, day-to-day, on tours, doing my tour, doing tour support. No, I don't really get nervous. That's and, fantastic. Uh, That's really good. Um, who are your favourite comedians, past and present? You've touched on this earlier, I think. Yeah. So I think um, past, you know, growing up, French and Saunders were yeah. huge influence, like, you know, in my life, not just because my, all, all of my aunties and my mum look like Dawn French. So it kind of always <laughs> was like... <laughs> One of my favourite people. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. And, um, yeah, when I signed to my agent uh, a few, you know, about six years ago, um, the agency, like the department, had, had, had look after Dawn French as well, right. and Saunders. So for me, that was like a, a no-brainer, being like, well, obviously, yeah. Um, so yeah, Dawn French, and for Saunders were, were were huge going up. Joe Brand, yeah, massive like influence. You know, like again, my family absolutely adored uh, Joe Brand. 
And then like sitcoms I used to watch growing up, Men Behaving Badly, yeah. Desmond's, I was absolutely in love with Desmond's growing up. Like Brilliant. I used to like, howl, howl with laughter. But then like as a kid, I like clowning stuff like Mr. Bean, I absolutely loved Mr. Bean. Um, and then we touched on it earlier, do you know what I mean? Like Lee Evans was, you know, always on the TV, Eddie Izzard always on the TV, Billy Connolly, you know, yeah. to a certain extent, have I got news for you? So there's all these things, there was comedy always on, like growing up, mainly TV stuff, not necessarily radio. And then as I got older, I kind of figured out people that I liked just from seeing them on, on TV. And, you know, it was very much a Jack D, Sean Locke, then Lee Mack. And just, yeah, just having like these soft spots for these certain comedians. That's and, brilliant. Um, and then now, yeah, just like, I just like love kind of any, anything. Like there's certain people that I could, I could watch John Kearns. Yeah. Day in, day out. I could watch John Kearns day in, day out. <laughs> Tim P, Daniel yeah. Kitchen, yeah. Nolly Adafope, people that are just not necessarily straight stand up, that's a bit, a bit quirky. Like, I just, you know, and then you got your friends, you know what I mean? I genuinely think that Rob Beckett is naturally one of the funniest blokes in the he world. Is. He is. Um, and I used to watch him on tour every night. I used to watch him on tour every night because I just knew that it, it'd be a different set, you know, or like, he likes to chat to the crowd. You just know that it will be just different, and it'll come. There'll be funny bits in it. So, yeah, we're we're the comedy scenes really looking as there's, a, there's a, an absolute plethora of really rich British. Well, not necessarily British, but comedy talent that are applying their trade in uh, the UK at the moment. That you know, it's yeah, we're we're we're, we're blessed. It is incredible. I mean, um, the reason why I asked the question is that in my blog there's a section called the ones that got away. And I've listed 25 comedians who I would have loved to have seen and have either passed on or I just haven't had a chance to see. Yeah. And, and top of the list are Morecambe and Wise. They were the reason yeah. why I love comedy. But I yeah. have seen uh, the, f the first year we went as a family, I saw Les Dawson oh, and wow. I saw Tommy Cooper. And, wow. and in that year, Les Dawson was just phenomenal. Yeah. And just I'm gonna make this audience laugh, and he mm. and he did all the characters and the piano and everything. And Tommy Cooper, um, the curtains opened and there's nothing on stage but a bed, and he's lying on it. And there's one woman in the crowd laughing, and it trickled round, so everybody's laughing. And after about five minutes, he popped his head up and he just went, "What? What? Somebody come on!" <laughs> <laughs> and that was just genius to watch yeah. and Ken Dodd and the two Ronnies yeah. that was in the 70s and then in the 80s I went through the young ones and alternative comedy I saw Rick Mayer oh, wow. and Carlisle that was incredible um, and, and all these comedians obviously hold lots and lots of memories that's why the blog happened yeah. and um, it's just wonderful to see and, and, and I cannot get enough of going and praising and supporting you all i just absolutely yeah. love it and i hope it shows how passionate i am for no, it cool, mate. Yeah, yeah obviously i mean of all everyone it's it's yeah. you know your front and center it yeah. so don't worry about that you i'm sure you'll be mentioned on jonathan ross or graham <laughs> well i don't know about that <laughs> well, there's, a, there's a number of comedians books that i've read like um lee mack peter k yeah i've got them all here yeah, yeah um uh, Jack D and stuff, and they do mention uh, two of them, like Lee Mack and J J Jack D, especially mentioned always mention Ivor Dembina, yes, because um, he uh, like runs clubs and we'd give him like feedback yeah, on, yeah. on jokes and stuff. So there's always like certain people. So I reckon if you're not already, you will be in some autobiographies at some point. <laughs> you're very kind. One of my uh, when you said, "Have I got news for you?" One of my favourite TV recordings that I went to. Um, we could we could never get into have I got news for you we could never get into the yeah. recording of it and we got in the last series of one of them and um, nobody knew who the guest was and these curtains come on and it was the first time Bruce Forsyth was on it and it wow. was just the greatest recording and, oh, and wow. he there's a bit on the half hour thing where he said where he's playing play your play your Iraqi cards right and he's trying to read the auto cue and he's going da 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 <laughs> and I am crying with laughter above Ian Hislop's head and he turns around and he goes please please this is satire <laughs> <laughs> 
and you can hear my laugh on the on the recording as clear as a bell. That and doesn't thought, surprise well, me at all. Fantastic. He was just me. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, Moving on from that, um, like me, do you go to a lot of comedy gigs as a member of the audience? No. I don't know why I put that question in, because every comedian I have, they've all said no. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I, think at the, I think at the start, people do. Yeah. At the start, because you want to go and see how to do it, what's yeah. your kind of competition, how to kind of like hone your craft. Then after a while, you get a little bit sick of it. Like, you do get a little bit sick of it. I think the only... And I mean, even then, I've, I've been a bit cheeky. I kind of got promoters to sort me out tickets. But like um, Edinburgh, if I go to Edinburgh, I'll go and watch people, you know, yeah, friends yeah. and stuff. And um, but I think, yeah, like Ricky Gervais. Me and Jack went to go and see Ricky Gervais at Hammersmith Apollo. Right. Um, I went with Alex Winter, who was my tech at the time. We went to see um, uh, Dave Chappelle at the Hammersmith Apollo. Yeah. yeah. Um, I went to see Ricky Gervais do a work in progress at Finchley Arts Depot. Right. Where David Earl, as Brian Gittins, was supporting him, which was amazing. Oh, he died on his, died on his ass. And it was so bloody good. It was so good. <laughs> and just hearing Ricky, Ricky off stage just pissing himself at David dying on his ass was great. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I did and I have done, but I don't anymore. Unless it's you know friends you know like I, I went to go and see John Kearns at the Battery yeah. Art Centre a few years back just because I like seeing him Daniel Kitson similarly Tim Key yeah um, yeah so there are certain people you, you will go and see and um, but I think because you're all commented out especially if you're like yeah. you know, I'm at the point now well you know pandemic aside where you're touring all the bloody time yeah, and then if you yeah. get a night off you don't really want to go and see a mate perform you want to go and see a mate after um, but what I do do is you know just see if you're in the same if you're in the same city as someone at the same night and then you can go and have drinks and talk to each other about the gig and stuff yeah, like that yeah, yeah. Um, yeah if, but, you're, um, if you're on a bill would you stay and watch the other act it depends who they are. Yeah. Like, it honestly yeah. depends who they are. And, um, you know, if if you're staying over, then 100%. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. If, you're week, yeah. if you're doing a weekend somewhere and, you know, if you're opening and someone else is closing, you know, you'd you'd stick around and watch them. If you're closing, you'd get there early to, to watch them yeah. um, if, if you want to. But, yeah, it just depends depends who they are. And, you know, yeah. you know, if I'm opening and I want to go home, I'll go home. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm closing... And it's like two hours away from home. I'll probably get there half an hour before I need to go on and then go home. Um, yeah. But yeah, in last summer, there was quite a few gigs, quite a few gigs with Al Murray and uh, Milton, uh, Milton Jones. And so you'd stay around for them because they're, you know, Fabulous. amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, just before we go, um, is there yeah. anything else you would like to say? Um, do you have any online gigs planned? Have you got any podcasts? Are you writing any books or anything? And also, where can people find you on social media? Yeah, I just say just follow me on social media, really, Rich. Yeah. Um, it's just Lloyd Griffith. If you just type that into everything, you, you'll you'll You're find there. me. So um, yeah, Instagram, Twitter, You're LinkedIn. You're on all of them. Yeah, so just give us um just give us a shout, and then I'm I'm on tour in in from September. Yeah. So if people want to come and see me, you know, I'm I'm on tour. I think it's pretty much like every day in September and a lot of October. Yeah. Well, um, I'll see you there definitely. Yeah, October the tenth, Leicester yes. Square Theatre. That's where you see definitely. me there. Yeah, and I, you know, like look, a majority have sold out, running more dates and stuff. So yeah, just check out the website. By the time this comes out, the website will be up and running. It'll probably it's all probably be sold out. It won't. Please come. <laughs> Please. Well, it has been an absolute joy talking oh, to mate. you. I could, I could talk to you all night. I really well, could. Mate, you, you know, whenever you do gigs and you know, you, you hear Rich's laugh, he's like, oh, he even did an online gig the other week. I was like, is that Rich Gill? And I like, <laughs> stood up. Well, Check I the think... gallery view. I was like, sit the <laughs> there he is. Like, Hello, mate. You can hear that laugh a mile off. Well, you're very kind. And and, <laughs> and genuinely, I, you are one of my favourite comedians. So thank you say you that so to much. everyone. You say that to everyone, Rich. No, you mm. are. You are. You are. Okay, if you don't, then please tell them I am one of your favourites. Okay. Just <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you so much for doing this, mate. And all Cheers, the best Rich, to you. Mate. We'll see you soon. All Take the best. Care, God bless. See you later on.